Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm your host, the one and only, and today I'm extremely excited to bring you a very special video review. Today we'll be taking a look at the brand new and mighty Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This is the current Samsung premium flagship coming in with a starting price of $1,200. So it begs the question, is it worth dropping all your hard-earned cash on it? And besides that, what's new? What new features did Samsung improve upon to incentivize us to upgrade? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to let you know that you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to take a deep dive at Samsung's latest flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and go over everything you need to know. Aside from that, look, I need to be up front. I have been an Apple fanboy ever since the iPhone 4 was released, which for all of you keeping tab was way back since 2010. However, my fellow Apple sheep, I gotta come clean and say that this phone is spectacular and it rightfully rivals the likes of the iPhone 14 Pro and the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which by the way, I have reviewed in depth already. Click the card at the top right or view the video description for that video link. Look, the Galaxy phones get a lot of things right and come with a ton of software tech, immense power, and best yet, the efficiency of our updated chipset means our battery life has been reasonably improved. So without further ado, we don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get right into the action. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in case you missed it, occasionally I'm going to do my unboxings in short form. So if you want to see this bad boy unboxed, again, click the card at the top right or check the video description. But anyway, first things first, let's go over pricing and availability. So just like the rest of the Galaxy S23 product line, the S23 Ultra is featured in the same four colors, that being green, phantom black, cream and lavender which is what we have here and i think it is a great purple option that differentiates itself from the likes of the purple iphone 14 pro i much prefer the more subtle and lighter purple found on the galaxy over the iphone like i mentioned at the beginning the ultra is the top tier galaxy flagship aka the mac daddy and for the baseline 256 gigabyte model it'll set you back twelve hundred dollars you can opt to increase your storage to a more generous 512 gigabytes for 1379 odd pricing, or you can go all the way up to a one terabyte model that comes with an eye-watering price tag of 1619. So yeah, kind of pricey, but it's in line in terms of pricing with the likes of the Apple iPhone 14 Pro line, which for reference, a maxed out one terabyte iPhone 14 Pro Max will run you $15.99. So yeah, basically the same, only $20 more expensive than the iPhone. So okay, I think we understand by now that this flagship phone is by no means cheap. So what gives and why is it so pricey? Well, first, let's go over what's familiar, and quite frankly, the first thing you'll notice is the visible similarity the chassis has to its predecessor. It looks nearly identical to the S22 Ultra, all but for a few key details. First off, you'll notice that our cameras on the back are even bigger for this generation, a common theme seen throughout the current smartphone realm. A huge culprit of this is the iPhones, whose camera lenses have gotten larger and larger over the years. Additionally, the actual chassis is more squared off, also with the display seeming to be a little flatter, due to the overall chassis being a tad more boxy than before. And honestly, I quite like it. It makes the ergonomics of the phone great and easy to hold in the hands for an extended period of time. And not only that, it just feels more premium in the hands. I don't know, it's hard to explain. That's not to say that the curve is gone, it's just slightly more gentle to produce a more modern and squarish look. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's design not only looks great, but also serves to make it even tougher than before, as it's the first phone to feature Corning Gorilla's Glass Victus 2, which promises to protect the front and back way better from scratches, but most importantly, drops. The glass feels exactly the same as before, so it's nice to know that the probabilities of your glass shattering get reduced thanks to this upgrade in durability. Now, while on the topic of the glass, let's look at what's behind that glass and take a look at the gorgeous 6.8-inch QHD OLED display. 
Just like before, it's the same size with the same screen resolution of 3088 by 1400 pixels at its maximum, and is rated to reach a peak brightness of up to staggering 1750 nits. Insane! This helps to produce the same gorgeous quality even while outdoors when the sun is out and bright. We have our same hole punch design which houses our selfie camera. It's a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture lens and works just fine. Samsung Galaxy phones have always been terrific at taking selfies. Of course, it's all up to preference. Some will prefer the iPhone selfie camera, others prefer the pixels, but here it does a tremendous job at taking some nice high quality front facing images. And just as with the prior Galaxy phones, there is an embedded fingerprint sensor located underneath the glass display for a greater range of convenience when unlocking your phone. In addition to face recognition, which is embedded as well in that selfie camera sensor. And just as before, you get the same 120 hertz refresh rate, which can scale down all the way to one hertz with the always on display to conserve battery. Just a quick tip, right out of the box, the Galaxy Ultra is set to the FHD plus setting at 1080p. Now I recommend, especially when dropping all that money on a phone, go ahead and scale it up to that juicy WQHD plus setting for up to a 1440 resolution because you deserve that crispiness on that massive display. Go ahead and splurge on yourself, kings and queens. Even though I'm an Apple fanboy, I gotta admit, this display is extremely appealing, is super gorgeous, gets incredibly bright, and is my favorite display currently on any smartphone. But aside from that, the whole entire layout, ports, S Pen tucked away in the same spot, it's basically the same phone on the exterior. Now, aside from the external differences, getting onto our two main changes when comparing it to the prior Galaxy S22 Ultra, and that is the chipset and of course our cameras. So let's start with what drives all this power under the hood first. This phone features the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. Kind of weird naming, but man, this thing is a beast. This chip is essentially just a slightly modified version of the prior Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but specifically tailored and designed with the Galaxy line in mind. And the only real difference is a slightly higher max clock speed on the performance core and slightly higher clock speed on the GPU. The difference is realistically negligible with only maybe a 5% boost as before. As you can see on screen and on Geekbench 6, the Galaxy S23 Ultra comes in with an impressive, albeit similar benchmarks to the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, with again the only real improvement here being to single core, which comes in at 1986 and a very impressive 5179 on multi. So yes, it does score higher than the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and therefore provides modest gains to user fluidity, gaming, and overall stability. Then again, Samsung Galaxy phones have proved time and time again that benchmarks simply don't matter. This smartphone is super capable for the vast majority of individuals and only serves as an incremental upgrade to an already terrific chipset. Oh, and by the way, there is no Exynos version, so everyone will be getting the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It was always really annoying how some of my international audience would mention that the Exynos just was not up to par. But now, thankfully, everyone is on the same playing field, thankfully. But now, let's discuss arguably the most well-received upgrade, and that has to do with our camera setup on the back. And the big deal with the Ultra that sets itself apart from the standard S23 line is the inclusion of that crazy 200 megapixel main camera sensor, which sounds ridiculous, I know, but ultimately, it more or less will appear the same as the prior version unless you happen to fall in the 0.2% of the population that prints out their photos they take off their smartphones. Now, here's the thing. Honestly, in rare instances, will you want to take 200 megapixel photos? It's ideal when you have a still scene such as a beautiful scenery out in the background or like for some graduation photos or something where your subject is staying still because these images are not only large, but there's noticeable shutter lag or at least perceived lag from when you press the button to take the picture and when the phone actually captures the image. 
for the most part, to not only save space, but also for a smoother experience, you'll mainly want to take photos at a reduced resolution. Like the S23 and S23 Plus, the Ultra's main camera takes 12 megapixel photos by default using pixel binning. In the case of the Ultra, it just has more pixels that it can group together, which results in better looking images that are brighter and have less image noise, even under low light. See, that's why they can technically say it's 200 megapixels thanks to that binning process on those pixels. Alongside with the main sensor, there's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. Perfect for those scenic shots while outdoors or maybe to capture images of the inside of a home, such as for home listings or Airbnb where the wider field of view makes the space appear much larger than it actually is. And we also have two telephoto cameras instead of the singular one found on the S23 and S23 Plus. The first telephoto lens has a 3x optical zoom, while the second one has a 10x optical zoom. The second telephoto camera also has a 100x digital zoom, which is completely absurd. I swear you can zoom in on someone's face and see their pores, but it's really shaky and there's a lot of noise. The more you zoom in, the less clear the image looks and the more noise that is inevitably produced. In essence, the S23 Ultra takes phenomenal photos as can be seen on screen now. The Ultra does a great job also at taking photographs in low lit conditions as the software takes the reins and produces images that appear really true to life. Night mode photography for the most part is something the Galaxy phones have always excelled at. Stay tuned as typically when talking about smartphone cameras, I could go on forever and make this a 50 minute video, seeing as how image reproduction on smartphones is really left up to the user and very subjective. It's all up to preference in how the smartphone internalizes an image. It's all up to preference in how the smartphone internalizes the image, does some software magic and spits out said image, which is ultimately what you end up seeing. Some people prefer photography on iPhones while others adore how more true to life images are on something like a Pixel phone. What I will say is that I am definitely planning on making a non-biased camera comparison between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Plus. So definitely stay tuned and if you have any suggestions for the camera comparison test, let me know down below. And lastly, what's on everyone's mind when shopping around for a new smartphone is of course battery life. But I'm going to be brief here because you won't want to miss my battery drain test which will give you a more realistic indication at how long these phones can actually last. But the Galaxy S23 Ultra offers the same high capacity 5000 hour milliamp hour battery as the S22 Ultra. But it looks like Samsung has made this phone more efficient thanks to the new chipset found inside. So in terms of efficiency, you can expect this device to last a couple hours longer than the prior S22 Ultra thanks to those advancements in efficiency. Unfortunately, Samsung is sticking with the same 45 watt fast charger for the S23 Ultra. I'd really like to see it go higher as other competitors are offering blazing fast charging speeds, but I charged this phone from 0% for about 30 minutes and it revived it with a pretty impressive 60% of juice only after 30 minutes, which for a quick recharge isn't bad at all. 60% can surely last you a whole day's worth even with moderate use. So in the end, what's the verdict? Look, this phone is nearing perfection. I think we're at a crossroads with smartphones because with each passing year, there's only so much they can add. I mean, do smartphone manufacturers want to add five, six, seven lenses? I think they'd look really goofy, but for the most part, phone upgrades nowadays consist of maybe a few new colors, some spec bumps to the chipset and cameras, and maybe a bump in starting storage or RAM. True innovation in smartphones has dwindled over the years. However, I gotta say that Samsung has this formula down packed. There's really nothing to complain about here and if someone ever does, they're most likely nitpicking. But realize that coming from the S22 Ultra to the S23 Ultra will only provide minimal value. A small increase to performance, moderate improvements to the camera department, and making the phone more efficient and speedier are some of the few potential benefits you'll receive from upgrading. But in my humble opinion, I think this bad boy is the single best Android phone you can currently buy, period. Yes, it is expensive, but it makes a strong case for being at least within the top three of current best smartphones in general currently in the market. The 200 megapixel camera is simply stunning, and Samsung has really upped its game when it comes to low light performance. 
But if you really don't care about the S Pen or the 200 megapixel camera, it may be worthwhile to look at the S23 Plus, which yes, a review is on the way, so stay tuned. If you want a phone that does it all, has insane power with one of the best gaming experiences on a smartphone, and are curious as to what all the hype is about on a 200 megapixel sensor, then the Ultra will most definitely be worth the investment. Let me know what you guys think though. For all my Android users, what is your experience with the Galaxy line? If you've ever owned one, I'm interested to see what you guys think, but as for me, if my ties with the Apple ecosystem weren't as deep, I'd seriously consider using this as my daily driver. As always guys, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't drank a cup of water today, then what are you doing? I'm just worried about your hydration, so go and do that, and hopefully everyone has a wonderful rest of your day, or night. Until next time guys, be safe, and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.